Hey, everybody. So I want to go over the PowerPoint um, that is here in this week's module on point. All right. So um, we've learned already about introductory paragraphs and thesis statements. Uh, so this lesson and the two that follow it, we are going to be focusing on our body paragraphs, right? This first lesson is all about point, which kind of translates to base one of writing, which is unity. And if you remember, that means making sure that you have a focused point at the beginning and that you stick to that point the rest of the way through. If you do that, you have unity. So we want to do that for the whole essay, which is where our thesis statement comes into play. And then all of everything else in the essay needs to relate directly to that point in our thesis statement. But even every paragraph after that needs to have unity. So the whole essay needs unity and every paragraph needs unity. So instead of a thesis statement telling us what the focus point is, every paragraph has a transitional topic sentence. So that is really where we're going to be focusing a lot of this lesson. Okay. All right, so body paragraphs. They are the building blocks of strong composition. And what do we mean by body paragraphs? We are referring to all of the paragraphs that come after your introductory paragraph and before your concluding paragraph. It's So your body paragraphs make up the largest portion of your essay, and it's in your body paragraphs that you are supporting your thesis statement and addressing your main points, right? So it is the body of the essay, right? If you think of like the introductory paragraph as the head and the concluding paragraph as the feet, the body paragraphs are everything from the neck down to the ankles, right? A big portion of your body, your body paragraphs are a big portion of your essay. It's where most of the work is done in the essay. So that's why there are three lessons this week devoted to body paragraphs, because again, it's, it's where you are really doing your job, right? So those body paragraphs need to be solid. What are the elements of a body paragraph, right? So, and this is any paragraph, but we are, obviously referring to paragraphs within an essay. So when you are dealing with paragraphs in an essay, the first element is a transitional topic sentence. Sentence, one sentence. The biggest chunk of the paragraph will be the support sentences. And then there should be a concluding sentence at the end of the paragraph. We're gonna learn uh, we're going to spend a lot of time on transitional topic sentences. Um, in the next lesson, you'll talk. We'll talk more about the support sentences. I don't really spend a lot of time. Um, there's not a separate lesson on the concluding sentence because once you sort of understand how the transitional topic sentence works and how the support sentences work, coming up with a concluding sentence seems more natural at that point. You kind of understand then that you need to wrap up that paragraph in some way. Um, but we'll be looking at some sample essays too, so we'll kind of take a look at the concluding sentences in those paragraphs, all right? So element one is the transitional topic sentence. What does it do? It is the key to the paragraph, much like your thesis statement is the key to your essay. The transitional topic sentence orients the reader in terms of where you are within the essay's overall organization. It links the current paragraph to the previous paragraph. It also reveals the current paragraph's focused subject. And it is positioned as the first sentence of the paragraph. Your support sentences directly support the transitional topic sentence. Your support sentences are going to consist of details, examples, facts, statistics, explanations, uh, whatever it takes 
because it's all it, it, it will be different every time depending on what the focus of that paragraph is, what the topic of the essay is, what type of essay you're being asked to write, right? But that your support sentences are where you are explaining what you need to explain regarding the specific topic of that particular paragraph. They have uh, every support sentence in the paragraph has to clearly and directly relate to the transitional topic sentence. Because otherwise that means they're off topic and you've lost unity. Everything needs to stay focused on the point of that particular paragraph. Your support sentences should promote interest and they should be logically ordered. The ideas, the progression of ideas from your transitional topic sentence to your concluding sentence, it should be a logical progression of thought. This makes up the body of your paragraph, the biggest chunk of the paragraph. Your concluding sentence, of course, is going to be the last sentence of your paragraph, and its job is to let the reader know that the paragraph is coming to a close, and it's going to somehow restate or stress the paragraph's focus, whatever that transitional topic sentence indicated your concluding sentence is going to sort of remind your reader of that in some way, all right? So those are the three elements of a paragraph, all right? Transitional topic sentence, support sentences, concluding sentence. So let's look at that first element, transitional topic sentence, uh, and see kind of how it relates to point, the first base of writing, the first step in the writing process. All right. So your first step in writing a paragraph is to decide what point you want to make and to write that point in a single sentence. It is commonly known as a topic sentence. To help guide yourself and your reader, you place the topic sentence at the beginning of your paragraph. It is the first sentence. And then everything else in that paragraph should develop and support in specific ways that single point given in the, the first sentence, right? So we're gonna focus right now on, on just a regular topic sentence for like a standalone single paragraph. And then at the end of this lesson, um, we will come back to the transition part and we'll look at, okay, well, how do we take a, a regular topic sentence now that we're familiar with those, how do we create a transitional topic sentence out of them? All it takes is adding the transition. You don't have to really change much at all. So once we get a good, uh, you know, a, a good footing in terms of simple topic sentences, then it's easier to come back and learn how to turn them into transitional topic sentences. All right. So first things first, you want to begin with a point, right? So we have. The sample paragraph here, changes in the family. So it says, changes in our society in recent years have weakened family life. Okay, well, we just learned that our topic sentence is supposed to be the first sentence of the paragraph. It is supposed to tell us exactly what this paragraph is going to focus on. So when I look at the first sentence of this paragraph, it says, changes in our society in recent years have weakened family life. So what that tells me as a reader is that the focus of this paragraph is going to be on certain changes that we have undergone as a society and how they have weakened family life. Let's see if that's what actually happens. First of all, today's mothers spend much less time with their children. So that's the first change that they believe has weakened family life. A generation or two ago, most households got by on dad's paycheck and mom stayed home. Now, many mothers work and their children attend an after-school program, stay with a neighbor, or go home to an empty house. Another change is that families no longer eat together. In the past, mom would be home to fix a full dinner, salad, pot roast, potatoes, and vegetables with homemade cake or pie to top it off. 
dinner today is most more likely to be a takeout food or, or frozen dinners eaten at home or fast food eaten out with different members of the family eating at different times. Finally, television has taken the place of family conversation and togetherness. Back where there were a Back where there were traditional meals, family members would have a chance to eat together, talk with each other, and share events of the day in a leisurely manner. But now, families are more likely to be looking at the TV set than talking to one another. Most homes even have several TV sets, which people can watch in separate rooms. Clearly, modern life is a challenge to family life. Okay, so the paragraph starts with a point, very focused. Right, that changes in our in society in recent years have weakened family life. It then goes on to support that point with three main ideas. Mothers working, family eating habits, and television. The author then provides specific examples of mothers back then and mothers working now. Then they provide examples of family's eating habits back then versus family's eating habits now. Then they provide specific examples of television and family life back then and television and family life now. So they provided a very decent amount of specific support for all three main ideas and both sides of their topic, life back then and life now. So they had, they started with a very focused point and they stayed focused on that point and they supported that focus point. It's pretty good. Take a look at this one, the family. Family togetherness is very important. However, today's mothers spend much less time at home than their mothers did for several reasons. Most fathers are also home much less than they used to be. In previous times, families had to work together running a farm. Now, children are left at other places or are home alone much of the time. Some families do find ways to spend more time together despite the demands of work. Another problem is that with parents gone so much of the day, nobody is at home to prepare wholesome meals for the family to eat together. The meals grandma used to make would include pot roast and fried chicken, mashed potatoes, salad, vegetables, and delicious homemade desserts. Today's takeout foods and frozen meals can provide good nutrition. Some menu choices offer nothing but high fat and high sodium choices. People can supplement prepared foods by eating sufficient vegetables and fruit. Finally, television is also a big obstacle to togetherness. It sometimes seems that people are constantly watching TV and never talking to each other. Even when parents have friends over, it is often to watch something on TV. TV must be used wisely to achieve family togetherness. Okay, so, uh, again, the paragraph begins with a topic sentence that says, family togetherness is very important. Okay, that's a very broad statement, so it doesn't really tell me what the specific focus of this paragraph is going to be. Um, But okay, we can we can maybe we can just come back and revise the topic sentence to make it a little more focused once we have read the rest of the paragraph, right? But clearly what I can tell is that the paragraph should be focusing on family togetherness and why it's important, right? But then there's no supporting evidence that really goes with that first sentence. <laughs> um, instead, the line of thought within this paragraph swerves around like a car without a steering wheel. We start off then after that topic sentence, which we can't even really call it a topic sentence. Um, that's what it's supposed to be. But the first sentence of the paragraph after that, then we start suddenly it's, it's mother spending less time at home. I was like, oh, okay, maybe that's what the actual point of the paragraph is. Nope, because after that, the paragraph then goes on to talk about fathers, families in previous times, and families who find, way, who find ways to spend, together, spend time together. And then there's that really random section about food and nutrition. 
and I have no idea how that relates to family togetherness. I can understand how it related to the, the, the main idea that they were trying to talk about, which was meals, right? But talking about the, the, the nutrition aspect, that, had, that has nothing to do with family togetherness. It was completely out of left field. Um, and then there's no concluding sentence either. Uh, we end up with TV must be used wisely to achieve family togetherness. Uh, well, okay, the paragraph started off with the phrase family togetherness. It ends with the phrase family togetherness, but they nothing matches up all, all throughout the paragraph. It, it is not unified around a specific point. And instead it just flutters about all over the place never really landing on one specific idea. Um, and it's a stark contrast to the one we had just read, which was very similar in terms of overall topic, right? Because, you know, they both talk about mothers working versus not working. They both talk about meals, family meals, and they both mention television. But this one here was much more focused and unified. This one did not begin with a focused point, and therefore the rest of the paragraph never really landed on a focused point. They never really got around to being focused on anything. There are elements, there are, you know, potential ideas in there, but it never lands. And that's why the topic sentence is so important. And that's why it's good to start with your topic sentence so that, you know, and try to be as focused as you can with it so that the paragraph itself, itself can stay focused. You can always come back and revise the topic sentence if you need to. Because sometimes we'll write a topic sentence and, you know, thinking that it's going to help us stay focused. And then we end up going off the road anyway. But maybe it's because what we're talking about over here off the road is what we actually wanted to talk about. We just need to bring it over here and change the topic sentence so that it matches what we have actually discussed in the paragraph. So it can, you know, and sometimes There'll be some paragraphs you write where the topic sentence will come to you very quickly. The paragraph will flow and it will stay focused on that point. There'll be times where the topic sentence comes easily, but then as you're writing the paragraph, you get a little lost. That topic sentence is there, though, to, to come back to, to check yourself. Have I stayed focused on this specific topic? If not, I need to fix some things. All right. All right, so we know that the opening sentence of a paragraph is the topic sentence. And, you know, if you hadn't really picked up on it, the topic sentence is kind of made up of two parts, the limited topic, meaning the focused topic, and the writer's attitude or point of view or the idea that they're trying to discuss about that focused topic. That is kind of also included in the topic sentence. That lets you know what they're going to do with that focused topic. Right? Um, and that was one reason why the first paragraph was very successful, right? Because it was clear that the topic was um, how recent changes in society have weakened family togetherness, right? So we know what the focus topic is and what direction the, that topic is going to go in. The second paragraph, family togetherness is important. I mean, okay, sure, it's important, but is anybody really going to argue with that? That doesn't really tell me where you're going to go with the paragraph. Uh, not enough for me to be prepared anyway. Um, we know that all the details in the paragraph should then support the focused point that is stated in the transition or in the topic sentence. Um, 
and we know, you know, we know that it should all relate to that direction that is indicated, you know? So like we have this example here, you know, um, my dog is extremely stubborn. Well, obviously the focus topic of this paragraph would be my dog, but the rest of the sentence is what lets the reader know what direction I'm taking this topic. My dog, is extremely stubborn. So my reader now knows exactly why I'm going to be talking about my dog. They know what to expect. They're going to expect me to be providing examples, sharing stories, explaining why my dog is stubborn, right? Okay. So you might find it helpful to think of your focus topic for a paragraph like an umbrella, right? So you have a focused topic. You're gonna to write a paragraph on how APA is a great place to go to college. Under that umbrella are your main ideas. In this case, the specific reason why you think APA is a great place to go to college. So under the umbrella of that topic are your main ideas flexible scheduling, reasonable tuition, and career placement services. And then you're going to be using specific supporting details like examples and reasons and facts for each of those elements under the umbrella. You can kind of, your whole essay is kind of like that too. So it's like you have a big umbrella where your thesis statement is the umbrella and your main points fall under the umbrella. And then each body paragraph, the topic sentence is an umbrella, and the main ideas of the paragraph fall under that umbrella. So it's so just a, a microcosm of the full essay. Very similar in terms of how it functions, right? So looking at that example with APA, we can list those sentences like this. APA is a great place to go to college. That is the point, the specific point of that paragraph. The other ideas, APA offers flexible scheduling, APA offers reasonable tuition, and APA provides career placement services. Those are the support, okay? Let's try this one. How would we label this? We've got these sentences right here. One of them is our point. It would almost be like the topic sentence. The other sentences on the list are the main ideas, the support. We have to figure out which one is the point and which ones are the support. So some people skip breakfast. Some people have poor eating habits. Some people always order supersized portions. Some people eat almost no fruits or vegetables. Okay, how can we figure out which of them are supporting ideas and which one is the main point? Well, look for specifics versus a statement that relates to all of them, right? Some people skip breakfast. Okay, well, does ordering supersized portions or not eating any fruits or vegetables, do those two ideas help explain anything about skipping breakfast? No. All right. Some people always order supersized portions. Well, we know that doesn't relate to skipping breakfast, um, but, but it, we know it also doesn't relate to not eating any fruits or vegetables. So, these three sentences do not directly relate to each other. None of them could be supporting examples of the others. But if we go back to the second sentence here, some people have poor eating habits. Now we know skipping breakfast is an example of a poor eating habit. Always ordering supersized portions is an example of a poor eating habit and not eating, eating any fruits or vegetables is an example of poor eating habits, right? So pretty sure that's the point in 
The first sentence, the third sentence, and the fourth sentence are the support for that point. Let's try this one. All right, my blood pressure has dropped. This new exercise program must be working. I have lost 10 pounds in three weeks. I don't tire as easily as I used to. All right, so blood pressure dropping, losing 10 pounds in three weeks, not getting tired as easily. You, depending on the topic, the, maybe one of those could be, an, you know, or two of those could be supporting examples for the other. But when we have that second sentence there, this new exercise program must be working, it just, it becomes clear that the reason she knows the program is working is because her blood pressure has dropped. She's lost 10 pounds in three weeks and she doesn't tire as easily as she used to, right? Go to the next slide and see that that was indeed the case for both examples. The second sentence in the list over here, some people have poor eating habits, is marked with a P because it is the point. The other three sentences are marked with an S because they are the support. Same over here. You're going to be asked to do something similar in the essay basics assignment slash quiz. So there are some additional examples here if you want more practice, right? Um, but the whole idea, again, is to see the list of sentences and note, you know, and you know, one of them is the main point. The others are supporting examples. How do I figure out which are which? One point, several support, right? Okay. So we know that our paragraph must begin with a point and the rest of the paragraph should stick to that point. Your topic sentence should reveal that paragraph point, the paragraph focus. So that might sound easy, but before we go any further with practicing topic sentences, there are some common errors that you should be aware of and avoid at all costs. First, question. Your topic sentence cannot be a question. Don't let this confuse you. I know in the introductory paragraphs lesson, we learned that one way to begin an introductory paragraph is to use the question method, right? As an attention grabber. And I even said, that's one of my favorite methods to use. That's one of my favorite attention grabbing techniques. But that's just the introductory paragraph. Your body paragraphs, your topic sentences, cannot be a question. We also learned that our thesis statement can't be a question, right? Neither can the topic sentence of your body paragraphs. So you can't say, have you ever owned a car that continually gives you problems at the beginning of a paragraph? At least not a body paragraph. No question. You also don't want to announce the topic of a paragraph. You don't want to say, the subject of this paragraph will be my apartment or my car is the concern of this paragraph. You want that topic sentence to be an organic, natural beginning to the paragraph. You also don't want a statement that is too broad. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to begin a paragraph saying many people have problems with their cars. Okay, yeah, it tells me that the paragraph is likely going to be discussing car problems, but I'd like to know what kind of car problems you're going to focus on because car problems the, the, the runs the game like there's a ton what are you actually going to focus on in this paragraph um you also don't want a statement that is too narrow you know you know starting a paragraph off with my car is a Ford focus oh that you know remember the topic sentence is supposed to indicate the focus plus the direction you're taking the topic in. So why are you telling me that your car is a Ford Focus? You need to, there needs to be a reason for this paragraph. There needs to be a reason why you're focusing on your car 
that should be included in this topic sentence too. All right, so four errors, no questions, no announcements, not too broad, not too narrow. Those are four things that you really need to keep in mind when you start working on creating topic sentences for your body paragraph. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to look at a couple of sample paragraphs that are missing their topic sentences. But underneath, we have options to choose from. And we're going to choose the option that we think makes the best topic sentence. So this paragraph here is about Mexican folk dances. So we're missing our topic sentence. But then the paragraph goes on to say, men often wear a Mexican cowboy outfit, which consists, I'm going to have to get this out of, oops, can't read it all. Men often wear a Mexican cowboy outfit, which consists of a tight-fitting black suit with silver trim. They wear large hats called sombreros. Sometimes the men wear peasant garb, a white cotton shirt and trousers, with a colorful scarf around their necks. Women dance in pleasant peasant blouses and full colorful skirts. They often have many colorful ribbons and lace sewn on the sleeves, bodices, and pins of their costumes. So based on what we just learned in that paragraph, the examples that were used, the support that was used, what would be the best option for a topic sentence for this paragraph? Would it be many different steps are used in folk dancing around the world, including skips, cops, slides, and steps? No, that would not be a good topic sentence for this paragraph because this paragraph is not about folk dancing around the world. It is specifically about Mexican folk dance. This paragraph also has nothing to do with the steps that are used in folk dancing. So that would not be a good topic sentence at all. It would not actually just make no sense whatsoever. What about this one? The folk dances of Mexico have originated among indigenous tribes long before the arrival of the Spanish explorers. Okay. Well, at least this topic sentence does specify Mexico, right? And the, the paragraph is about Mexican folk dancing. But it is not about how these dances originated. That, that does not get discussed in this paragraph. So this wouldn't be a good topic sentence either. Folk dances may be performed for many different occasions, such as weddings, festivals, preparations for war, or celebrations of victory. So, Again, this paragraph is about Mexican folk dances, not about folk dancing in general. And this paragraph does not have anything to do with the reasons why the folk dances are performed. What about the last one? Mexican folk dances are traditional communal dances in which the dancers wear traditional costumes. That is the best topic sentence out of these options because it specifically mentions Mexican folk dancing and it mentions traditional costumes. And we know that all of the supporting examples in this paragraph all relate to what the dancers wear. So that is a perfectly acceptable topic sentence for this paragraph. All right. There are two more examples here that you can look at if you'd like a little more help. I'll at least throw in some extras. We're going to go ahead and um, take the next step, which is, you know, okay, you can identify the best topic sentence from a list of options. But you're not going to have a list of options when you write your own essay. You have to come up with your own topic sentence. And again, you might be able to do that right as soon as you start writing the paragraph. You might have a good topic sentence in mind. Sometimes, though, we really don't. So we just start the paragraph with something, write the paragraph, and then come back and revise the topic sentence or create it at that point. So that's sort of what this little practice round will be like, where the paragraph is written and now you have to look at 
the supporting examples that were given and figure out what the topic sentence should be and create it yourself, right? So we have here, again, no topic sentence. First, people who exercise look better. Exercise is important to keep our bodies in good shape. In addition, people who exercise have more energy. For example, a person who exercises can walk upstairs or climb hills more easily. People who exercise have a healthier heart too. Finally, exercise reduces stress and helps you have a clear mind. Too much stress can cause you to worry a lot and that is not good for your health. For these reasons, if you want to improve your health, you should exercise regularly. So the main ideas that are tackled in the support that is used in the paragraph is about how exercise helps people look better and then how exercise helps people have more energy, um, how it helps have a healthier heart and how it can reduce stress. We can also look at the concluding sentence of this paragraph because hopefully it sort of gives a nod back to whatever was presented in the topic sentence. And the concluding sentence here says, for these reasons, if you want to improve your health, you should exercise regularly. So we clearly need a topic sentence that indicates that the focus of this paragraph is on how exercise can help improve your health. Let's see. There are many excellent reasons for exercising several times each week. So I was close. They don't actually mention health. The health is are, is the support, right? So they are simply trying to explain why exercising several times a week is a good idea, what those reasons are. So if you had been thinking something along those lines, then you were headed in the right direction, right? Got another example here, right? So we have a blank. No topic sentence. Some people learn to play a musical instrument because they want to have fun. They want to play it with their friends or maybe in a band. Other people learn to play an instrument because it is part of their culture. Certain instruments are popular in some cultures, such as the guitar in Spain, in the Middle East. Um, sometimes people even learn to play an instrument because they think it will make them smarter. They want to keep their mind busy, and music is different from the work they think about all day long. In sum, this is clearly not just what there's clearly not just one main reason that people play a musical instrument. All right, so what are our main ideas? People play instruments to have fun. People play instruments as part of their culture. And people might play instruments to become smarter. So those all sound like reasons why people might play instruments. Let's look at the concluding sentence here. In sum, there is clearly not just one main reason that people play a musical instrument. So I'm guessing that we need a topic sentence that basically says there are many reasons why someone might choose to play an instrument. I did this one pretty good. There are several common reasons why people learn to play musical instruments. So again, if you were thinking somewhere in that ballpark, then you're you're getting the gist of it. It is looking at the specific examples that are used as support to help you figure out what the focus topic is and how to create a topic sentence out of that. That only works though if the body of the paragraph if all of the supporting sentences are on topic. So that is why I say it is still best to try to come up with your topic sentence first as a way to check yourself. Um, or if you're doing it the other way and you've got the paragraph written and now you need to add the topic sentence, if you're looking through your paragraph and you're like, okay, I got to look at the main ideas that I have used as support. And you list 
those main ideas and they are all over the place and you're like i don't i don't know how to put all of these i don't know what they have in common where i could you know create a sentence that sort of becomes the umbrella over all of them that might be an indication that you have that that you've got disparate ideas in the paragraph and that they all don't belong together in that paragraph Maybe some of them belong in that paragraph, but others either belong in another paragraph somewhere else in your essay. Maybe they don't even belong in the essay at all. That's a decision you have to make. But if if this is the the sort of the method you're using to help create your topic sentences is to just, uh, if I try to create a perfect topic sentence now, it's going to trip me up and I'm it's going to slow me down. So I'm going to just write the paragraph and then come back and create my topic sentence based on what I've written. Perfectly fine to do that. But make sure that you are thinking about what you've written. Does it all make sense together? Is there a way to logically sort of encapsulate all of those ideas under one topic sentence umbrella? And if your answer is no, then you need to consider whether or not some of the ideas in the paragraph actually don't belong. Right? Because you want to make sure you got unity. Okay. So we've looked only at topic sentences for like a single standalone paragraph. Uh, it's just a little easier to only deal with the information <laughs> in a very contained manner to show you how to then create the topic sentence. But we know we're writing an essay and we've got multiple paragraphs, our body paragraphs. And we know, based on what we learned at the beginning of this lesson, that those are called transitional topic sentences. You you need to not only still provide the focus and direction, but you also need to let your reader know where they are within the essay. So your first body paragraph, where you begin discussing your first main point, you would say, let's go back to my example that I've been using since week one about Olive Garden being a great place to eat. You know, my thesis statement would have said, Olive Garden is a great place to dine because of their cleanliness, service, and food. So my first main point of my essay would be the cleanliness. So I have my introductory paragraph, I've grabbed my reader's attention, I have uh, introduced my topic, and then I have provided my thesis statement, and then I move to the first body paragraph of the essay, which will begin discussing my first main point. And I will let my reader know that. So the first thing that makes Olive Garden a great place to eat is their cleanliness. And then that's my topic, my transitional topic sentence. Because I used that transition first. I'm letting my reader know this is the beginning of my main point. The first thing about Olive Garden that makes it a great place to eat is their cleanliness. And then the rest of that paragraph will provide specific examples of the cleanliness. If I've got a lot to say about the cleanliness, I might require a second body paragraph to continue explaining how clean the place is. I would let the reader know at the beginning of that next paragraph that I'm still talking about my first main point, that it's just an extension of the idea that I discussed first about their cleanliness. When it's time for me to move on to my second main point, I would begin that next paragraph with a transitional topic sentence that lets my reader know we're moving on. In addition to the cleanliness, Olive Garden also provides friendly service. So I reminded the reader of where we just came from and I let them know exactly where we're going now in this paragraph. That's what I mean by transitional topic sentences and what I mean by orients the reader and lets them know where they are 
within the essay's overall organization. We're going to take a look right now at an essay that provides really good transitional topic sentences. So, the movie about, no, it is an essay about the movie Halloween, right? So, I'm not going to read the whole essay. Feel free to do so on your own if you want, but we are going to look at the thesis statement and then we're going to look at the transitional topic sentences. And if uh, there's a link that uh, underneath the video, uh, there's a link to the PowerPoint and a link to this handout. And if you download the handout, you'll see the margin comments over here where, you know, so you can kind of have a reminder of what I'm saying here in the video. <laughs> but looking at the thesis statement, he says, with the use of great acting, suspense, a chilling musical score, and one hell of an antagonist, Halloween is undoubtedly the greatest horror movie yet. Great thesis statement, four very clear main points, and I know why he's discussing this movie, right? Let's look at the first body paragraph. The first aspect of Halloween that makes it such a terrific film is the acting. He orients me right away. I know where I am within this essay's organization. I know we're at the first main point the first aspect of Halloween. I also know exactly what that first main point is, the acting. And then he goes through and he gives his specific examples of Jamie Lee Curtis. And then we get to the second body paragraph here. And it turns out he wanted to devote another paragraph to this main point. He's not focusing just on Jamie Lee Curtis. He wants to also talk about Donald Pleasant. So look at this transitional topic sentence. The best acting, however, goes to Donald Pleasant for his portrayal of Dr. Sam Loomis. He orients me again. I know that this is an extension of the first main point. He has two very solid examples that he wants to use. He has talked about Jamie Lee Curtis and had a good bit to say about her. So now he wants to go to a new paragraph to say everything he has to say about Donald Pleasant. But he makes it clear that we are still within that first main point. We get to the third body paragraph. In addition to superb acting, another key factor to the greatness of Halloween is the suspense. He orients me in addition to the superb acting. So I know we're moving on from the acting now, right? Another key factor to the greatness of Halloween is the suspense. So now I know we're moving on from acting to suspense. Then he provides an example of some of, you know, a suspenseful scene. Then we get to the next body paragraph. This scare, meaning the one he just described, this scare by itself was pretty good, but what really tipped it over the edge was the stinger. So I know he has more to say about the suspense, but in, he's not, it, it's, it's not a, a scene from the movie. It has to do with the stinger of the movie. So again, he has switched to a new paragraph because even though it still falls under the the main point of the suspense it is a different aspect of the suspense and then he explains what a stinger is and how it works within this movie the presence of the stinger is no accident as john carpenter was very aware of how effective music can be all right so let's go back here Oh, yeah, chilling, great acting, suspense, chilling musical score, right? So the stinger helps build the suspense and it leads to the musical score, the bridge, because it helps build the suspense, but it is also music. <laughs> okay. So the presence of the stinger is no accident, as John Carpenter was very aware of how effective music can be. 
So he reminds me of where we just were and where we now are. We have moved on to the third main point. When we get to the final body paragraph, yet even with the addition of the great musical score, so now I know we're moving on, no horror movie can ever be a good horror movie without an outstanding antagonist, and Halloween has the best antagonist in Michael Myers. I know he orients me again. I know we're moving on, and I know we're in our last main point, and I know exactly what it is, the antagonist. So those are great transitional topic sentences, right? It, it, it covers all the bases of just a traditional topic sentence, right? Each one of them tells me exactly what that paragraph focus is and the direction that that focus is going to go in. But it all, every single one of them also contains the transition to guide me from one paragraph to the next. A lot of people are often under the impression that the transition needs to happen at the end of a paragraph. Like here, where he gets finished talking about Jamie Lee Curtis, there should have been a sentence that said, but Donald Pleasance was actually was even better in his performance. And then we go to the next paragraph and actually discuss Donald Pleasance. That's not how it works. Right? Because remember, a paragraph should end with a concluding sentence that wraps up what was discussed in that paragraph. The transition comes at the beginning of the next paragraph. It is embedded into the topic sentence of the next paragraph. So I don't know why people I don't know, I might need to check out like popular writing, like magazines, online, like blogs and things like that, and find out if people are doing that. And that's why we are under that impression so much. But, you know, if you think about those three elements of a paragraph, it is supposed to begin with a transitional topic sentence, then you have all of your support sentences, and then you have a concluding sentence. The concluding sentence, remember its job, to wrap up the paragraph and remind us of that paragraph focus. It is, its job is not to tell us what's coming next. It's not, that's not what it's supposed to do. We find out what's coming next when we get to the beginning of the next paragraph, right? So transitional topic sentences. All right, let's go ahead, go back to our PowerPoint here. All right. We're pretty much here at the end. So remember, we have those three elements of a paragraph, transitional topic sentence, support sentence, and concluding sentence, right? You must begin with a focused point and you must stick to that point. That focus is going to be revealed in a topic sentence. When we're writing essays, the topic sentences of our body paragraphs need to also have that transition embedded in them, right? And you want to make sure that while you are creating your transitional topic sentences, whether you're trying to do, do it right as you begin writing a paragraph or whether you're going to write the paragraph and then come back and create the topic sentence, no matter how, which method you use, make sure to avoid those four common errors. A topic sentence cannot be a question. You do not want to announce it. You don't want it to be too broad and you don't want it to be too narrow. So on the essay basics assignment, you're going to have a lot of practice, a lot of questions over topic sentences. And remember, yes, you, you get points taken off, but then you get a chance to make corrections because it's this is, you know, these lessons and the assignments that go with them are your chance to practice and, it, you know, enhance your skills. So I do take the points off, but only to encourage you to make the corrections and learn it better. Okay. So you can come back to these lessons while you're working on the essay basis if you need to, right? Um, if you've got questions, let me know. Otherwise, go ahead and move on to uh, to the next lesson on support.